how should we ask questions? Like a cop? Kelly, license and registration, please. You know you were driving 85 in a 35 zone. I know there's an In-N-Out burger at the end of the <laughs> year, but do you, what, what kind of? <laughs> hey, how are you? How's your wife? Is she feeling better? Oh, Very no. conversational. Exactly. Stroking and nurturing and empathy. We talk about that almost every meeting here. Making somebody else. What, what do we want people to think about us when we meet them and when we leave them off the phone or after the meeting? What do we want them to say about us? He was a great guy. Man, that was, you know, he enriched my, he or she, I learned something from him or, or whatever, but you leave with a positive feeling. Not, not like, oh, oh my God, you try to get into my wallet or, or something. Just, even though there's a transactional nature to it, it's just the, 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 the common ground that you establish and the respect for that person. Exactly. And we want to make the, people like us and trust us. Yeah, lift them up. On that. Do you think we have to say what they want to hear? This is where it's got, I'm going to get into Dane, Danger Will Robinson territory right now, okay? Is it all right with the group if I'm politically incorrect slightly? Sure, why not? Okay, boy, what is he gonna, shit, what's he gonna say next? <laughs> um, I have a note here, and I had a conversation uh, today with one of my clients, uh, Jonathan Smith, I don't think he'd mind. Have we, and I wrote this down for the group today, listen carefully. Have we lost our ability to speak with directness? Are we afraid of offending somebody by telling the truth? What do you guys think? Millennial first, Tashiana. Uh, yeah, I think we are. But, yeah. So that's why I said, like your friend, because your friends aren't, your good friends aren't. What's the definition of a good friend? <clears throat> Basically, they give it to you straight. Like, they, they want the best for you, so they're going to. The good friend will give it to you straight, even though you may not want to hear it, or it may even endanger the relationship. Is that a true friend? Yeah. Yep. Jonathan, we talked about this for a minute. I'm going to mute you. Uh, you gave me, I, I hope you don't mind, I, I, I cited you uh, in the conversation here, that uh, we have lost our ability to speak with directness and honesty to people by because we're so worried that it might be offensive. Not that that's our intent, but it's the truth as we know it. Would you talk on that? We talked a little bit about that before. Yeah, um, we just, we were discussing how sometimes, you know, it just, you, you may be uh, afraid to offend somebody by the, the words you use or to be too aggressive or you'll be too direct. So, uh, and I think you're right. When we were discussing about it, it's like, you know, we, we're okay. we have the right to do that because we're trying to help somebody, you know, the end goal. We're trying to help somebody. Don't we need in business, let's relate this to what we're here for. Don't we in business need to get away from the kumbaya, let's make s'mores, howdy doodies conversation how about yeah. that Super Bowl stuff? And finally, and get to the meat and potatoes. Don't we need to do that? Don't you find that attractive when you have those honest adult to adult conversations, even though you may not agree with the person? What do you guys think? Yeah, I, I agree. agree. Are, we, are we totally gone from this now where we can't, in sales, we've been conditioned to use the scripted words and everything instead of having, gee, you've got a big problem. You can't sell your home. You've had it listed for months. You've uh, lowered the price. You've had multiple realtors. Why don't you, you know, instead of saying to me, I'll think about it, why don't we have, I have some ideas here that can help you move your home or we could get off the phone, you pick. Right, be direct, um, try and be informative. And like you said, let them know if it's, you know, if it's not something he's, he, he likes, he wants to hear right now, then we can move on and if that's okay. Yeah. What are, the th what are the four or five things you never talk about at the dinner conversation in front of grandma? <laughs> I don't know that one. Uh, uh, sex. Religion. Religion, religion, right? Sex. Politics. Politics, the biggie, right? Yeah, uh, money. Money, some, uh, well, you yeah, know, money, yeah, money, it's always, that's old school, and diets. Do you ever talk about diets on a table full of people? Everybody has a different opinion about diets, right? Yeah. Very controversial. So we don't want to go with politics. I, 
I had a friend, I talked about this. She, she shared this with a very good friend in Colorado. She said she has, and she loved, she loves to cook. She's a gourmet cook. She loves to cook and she loves people coming to her house for con dinner conversation. Unfortunately, she had somebody who was right of Attila the Hun and someone who was left, uh, left of Mao Zedong. Um, hmm. And, and they, they got into this heat. <laughs> You're laughing really hard at that, Nicole. <laughs> Why is that always so common? <laughs> Why is that always so common, the, the we're, two? End up? We're, we're, we're a complicated society. We're opinionated depending on our culture, where we grew up, who our background, what we read and everything. But these two guys really went at it, and it got very uncomfortably heated. Uh, for the, can you imagine having a dinner party? Has anyone ever had that experience where a friendly little dinner get together and it, it just exploded in the World War III? Yeah. Tashiana, you, you, I think you got a story to share with us. <laughs> um, well, it wasn't really with family, but like, I mean, 